three. In this lecture, we will talk about how to verify matrix multiplication efficiently using a randomized algorithm. And then we will talk about a randomized mean cuts algorithm as well for a certain graph problem. But before that, we will introduce two concepts. Firstly, the law of total probability, and then the principle of deferred decisions. So for law of total probability, the statement reads as follows. Assume that we have a certain set of events E1, E2, E3, up to Ek, and these events form a partition of the sample space. So what does that mean? It means that all these events, they are disjoint, they do not have any overlapping outcomes, and then they span the whole sample space. Now consider any event B. The theorem here says that the probability that B occurs can be can be computed as the sum of the following probabilities. Probability of B intersecting E1, probability of B intersecting E2, and so on and so forth, up to the probability of B intersecting Ek. So to prove this, it is very easy. We can look at the Venn diagram. So in this example, we have events E1, E2, E3, E4, and E5, and they form a partition of the sample space. And then in the middle part, we have the event B. So the probability of B will be what? It will be all the probabilities of the outcomes within the region of B. So we will add this, add this, add this, so there's nothing here, add these two, and add this. And then what is this one? This is actually the part that is in the intersection of B and E1. And this part, it is in the intersection of B and E2, and so on and so forth. So from this, from this example or from this diagram, we will see that the, the theorem follows. Okay, the next one is the principle of deferred decisions. So what is this idea about? So suppose that a certain outcome of a random experiment is produced from a series of random choices. For instance, in our experiment, maybe we are going to flip a coin 10 times. So we are going to have an outcome, and this outcome consists of the results of these 10 random uh, flips. Now, if you want to analyze the probability of certain events happening, then it is the normal way is to check whether each outcome lies in this event or not. So we are going to check for each output outcome whether it is there or not. And this idea corresponds to fixing the result of each random choice, and then so, so that we get a certain outcome by fixing the result of each random choice, and then consider whether this outcome fits or does not fit the event. But on the other hand, sometimes it may be easier to analyze the, the situation if we fix part of the results first, and then we fix the remaining parts later. And this idea is called principle of deferred decisions. So let us have some example to to, to, to strengthen our view about this, this idea. So the first example here is, let's say we are going to roll a fair die 10 times. And then we want to ask, what is the probability that the, the final sum of the results of these 10, 10, flip, uh, 10 rows is a number that is divisible by 6? So for instance, if the value of the rows are all 1s, then in the end the total sum will be 10, and it is not divisible by 6. But then, let's say if the, if the, as, uh, if the value uh, are, are like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then whatever, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then, oh no, there are now, now, now 11, uh, 12 flip, uh, rows. Okay, so, so let's consider the special case. Okay, let's say all the, all the outcomes are 3s. 10 times, then the total sum will be 30, and then in this case, um, it is a value divisible by 6. So we want to find out, when we perform this random experiment, what is the chance that the final sum is divisible by 6? So in a normal analysis, 
we will do what? We will check each of the possible outcomes. Those, there are 6 to the power 10 of them. We will check each of these outcomes one by one and find out whether uh, it is uh, the, the corresponding sum is divisible by 6 or not. So this is one method. It works, <clears throat> but it may take time. So let us consider a different idea. So with deferred decisions, we will consider the scenario where we have only rolled the die nine times. At the, at, at the point that we have rolled nine times, we stop and consider. So this is like, like fixing the first part of the results of the random choices. Now, since we have only rolled the die nine times, so there are altogether six to the power nine scenarios. And then for a certain scenario, let's call it S, then what we are going to do here is that under this scenario, we are going to roll the die for the last time to finish the experiment. Now, in such a case, given that S happens, then the sum, the final sum will be divisible by six. It's going to be 1 over 6. It is because when S happens, then the results of the first 9 rows are already fixed. Then it will be equal to a certain value. Maybe it is equal to the value 17. It could be something like this. Then we will see that in order to, to have the sum to be divisible by 6, the last row has to be equal to a certain value. So in our case, so, so the first 9 rows gives us 17. So in order to get the final sum to be divisible by 6, then we will need to have what? We will need to have the, 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 the last row must be a 1 in order to get a total sum to be equal to a, a multiple of 6. And, and in such a case, there is only one choice, exactly one choice among the 6 possible outcomes of the last die to make the sum equal to 6. So in that case, Given S happening, the chance that the sum is divisible by 6 is always equal to 1 over 6, no matter which S you are talking about. So, the desired answer that we want to compute is not a conditional probability. We want to find out what is the chance of the total sum is divisible by 6. But for this one, we can calculate it <coughs> by the summation of the probability of sum is divisible by 6 given s multiplied by probability of s we sum all these products for all the possible s so why why is it correct why why is the first desired answer here that we have can be calculated by this way so actually this is a disguise of the law of total probabilities right so when you multiply this conditional probability with probability of S, then this is the probability of sum is divisible by 6 intercept S. And so the summation of all these cases, because we are considering different S, so they are con con uh, each S are disjoint from each other. So we will see that this is actually the law of total probability. Now, in the previous page, we have confirmed that this probability is equal to 1 over 6. So we are going to replace it here in this part. And now, because 1 over 6 is a constant, so we can move it out. So it is 1 over 6 multiplied by the summation of all the probability of S. And because all these are disjoint and it spans the whole sample space, so this is actually equal to 1. It is all the possible cases. So the answer is equal to 1 over 6. So what does that mean? We have now just computed that the probability of the sum is divisible by 6 is exactly 1 over 6. So we do not consider each outcome one by one. But here, actually, we are grouping the outcomes for 6 outcomes into one group. So for each particular scenario S, it actually corresponds to six outcomes. Okay, because we are fixing the results of nine, nine, nine rows, right? And so for the last row, it could be one, two, three, four, five, six. We are grouping all these six possible cases into, into one, one, one big scenario and consider. And luckily, for this one, we can have an easy bound. 
and in that case, we can have the final answer computed easily. Okay, so let's take a look of another example. So in this example, we just have uh, the, the scenario that we have a fair coin. But unfortunately, for some accident, this fair coin that we have is mixed with nine other coins. And all these coins, they look really the same. We cannot differentiate one from the other. But the nine other coins, we have no idea whether it is a fair coin or not. So originally, we have a fair coin, right? But now this fair coin disappeared because it is now mixed with some other coins. So we no longer can, can find out which one is the fair coin. And our problem here is, okay, now we need to perform an experiment so that we want to, we want to use or the original fair coin to do to something like uh, to 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 divide the cake between two persons uh, 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 in a fair way. So originally we want to flip this fair coin and and then we get get the answer. But now we don't have the fair coin. So what what we can have is now we just have ten ten coins with one of them to be fair. The problem here is can we still simulate the original fair coin? Can we simulate a fair coin? using these 10 coins but then we do not need to find out what is the original fair coin so let's if you if you are interested yeah this is actually a very interesting problem yeah i suggest you to pause and think a little bit about this but for here let me continue so if you want to think pause for a while before moving on to the next slide okay now the idea is we can do the simulation. So yes, what we do here is we are going to flip all the coins and we want to check how many heads are there. And we are concerned whether the number of heads is even or not. If it is even, then this is one case. If it is odd, this is the other case. We claim that this can be used to simulate a fair coin we actually want to find out what is the probability that the total number of heads is even. But for, for this, we apply deferred decisions to help us to do the analysis. So what we are doing here is we are considering the scenarios where we have flipped all the nine coins apart from the fair one. Okay, here we are doing analysis, so it is okay to, to consider uh, the ordering of the coin flipping. To, 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 our, uh, to our convenience. So we look at, so we are playing like a god. We will observe from the top and look at the scenarios by looking at what happens for the, for the nine other coins first, and then we go back to see what happens to the fair one. Again, for each of these scenarios, let's call it S. So once this S is now done, is fixed, what we need to do is to flip the final coin. So when we flip the fair coin for the last time, then the probability of number of heads is even given what S is. So once we have the results of nine coins, the chance of head is even is always equal to one over two, no matter which S you are talking about. For instance, S could be the case that we have all the, all the coins to be had. So in such a case, we need the last time to be ahead. On the other hand, let's say if, if S corresponds to the case that all the flips are tails, then we must need the last one to be a tail. And because we are talking about flipping the fair coin as the last one, so the chance of having head for the last one and the chance for having tail for the last one is always equal to 1 over 2. So that's why it is equal to 1 over 2. So if you are now okay with this one, again, then we repeat the same procedure as before. So we, we can now find out the chance of number of heads is even unconditionally. It is equal to the summation of the probability of number of heads is even given s multiplied by probability of s. So this part is the law of total probability. And because the first part, this probability, we just analyzed it to be 1 over 2, so this part is 1 over 2, so the resulting whole sum will be equal to 1 over 2 as well. So in other words, we can simulate 
a fair coin. Okay, so let's stop for a while. So this is the part one of this lecture.